Hello VCC Online, thank you for joining us again this Sunday. Hey, last Sunday was so amazing. We wrapped up our Seeking Adventure series and Pastor Rini, he had some great points. Absolutely, I could not agree more. I love the part that Pastor was talking about how prayer should be our first response and not our last result in the situations and things that we're facing. And that could not be more true than what we saw last Sunday. Uh, we are having outdoor services and not one of our prayer team members was not praying with somebody. They were praying and praying and praying and then God God was good and not only that but online I had the honor and privilege I got to pray with Monica and Destiny so if you guys are out there I have been continually praying for you the rest of this week um, but I got to partner in prayer with them and uh, that's the great thing about prayer is that it doesn't matter where we are whether it's in a chat whether it's here in our courtyard whether you're FaceTiming with somebody when we call out to God he hears and he answers our prayers amen 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 this Sunday we are starting our new series Meaningful Meandering, and Pastor Rini is going to be sharing in just a few moments, Magnificent Moments with Jesus. And if you are joining us for the first time, we are so stoked that you are here, and we would love to know it, so drop a I'm new in the chat, and our online pastor would love to connect with you. And we have a gift to send you just for saying hello, and you can also follow us on Facebook and catch Pastor Rini's daily devotionals Monday through Thursday. Absolutely. And our leadership warm-up, that's coming. It's going to be this coming Tuesday, August 4th at 7 p.m. It's not too late to sign up. You can head over to our website, bccfresno.org, and get under life groups and sign up. And what this is for, this is geared towards all of you that may be feeling that tug that God is calling you to lead a life group, a small group of people, um, and just building community with one another. We are better together. That is something we totally agree with here at BCC, and we would love nothing more than to partner with you and your great ideas that you're having whether that is maybe you're going to do it through zoom maybe you're going to partner and meet in the courtyard here at our church outside social distancing but gather together whatever it is we want to partner with you in that so be sure and sign up today family we get to trust god with all of our finances but sometimes that can be a challenge right so we really got to just pray it in and believe and trust as we Give God 10%. You can partner with us to do that through our website, the app, or our text to give option at 559-400-7865. And family, I just want to partner with you. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes as we pray over the finances and we trust God in our giving? Amen. Father God, we come before you and we just pray, even through the amazing technology of social media and what we are doing right here, right now, would you just reach anybody and everybody that needs to hear this, Father? Would you touch them in their finances? Would you bless their finances? Would you just open up amazing opportunities, Father God? And would you just give us the opportunity to trust you as we give back our 10%? Lord, would you bless the gift? Would you bless the giver? And will we be excited, excited to see what you do as an adventure in walking with you? And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Hey, that was so good that was so good it is hard to trust God with our finances and it is hard you know to trust God in the giving but it is something that when we do it you're never gonna know the impact and the amount of what God's gonna take of even the littlest of giving that God does and he maximizes it to the full for you and for whoever it is that's gonna be blessing so that's super exciting sorry totally on a tangent <laughs> but anyways well church it is just about that time let me see you drop those praise hands in our chat um, because it is time for worship word and wonder <laughs> I invite you to worship with us this morning wherever you are that you would be feel free to come before the throne of our God who is seated high up in the heavens but who cares about us who loves you who sees you who wants to take upon your burdens and return that with joy so let us worship and praise him today let, let, let us lift his name up high above all other names Rejoice. He wraps himself in life. 
have moments in your life that you think are so unimportant and mundane that God just stops watching you? I mean, when you're fishing, can anything meaningful happen when you're fishing? I think sometimes we wonder and question how much of our life has to be dedicated wholly to God and what does it even mean to be dedicated to God? If I'm fishing and I'm having recreation, am I not doing anything meaningful? These are great questions. And I want to answer those in this month's series called Meaningful Meandering. I had a friend and he used to pray about everything. And I mean everything. He would pray about where to go to lunch, whether it was McDonald's or Carl's Jr. And then, while we're standing there in line, if it's, let's say, McDonald's, he would literally pray and ask God about whether he should order the Big Mac or the cheeseburger. I went golfing with him. Before every single swing, he would recite a prayer. And then I would say, what are you doing? And he kept reciting uh, Thessalonians to pray without ceasing. And I go, I don't think that's what it means. And literally, I had to stop hanging out with this guy because it was too stressful for me. It was like he was questioning every moment of everything that he did all day long. And it really created stress to be around this poor guy. But it does make us think about how we spend our time and some important questions especially now that we have this international global pause that many of us are on. What is meaningful? What is mundane? What is God watching? And so this month, this whole month, we're going to talk about meaningful meandering. And Psalm 1611 is our scripture for the month. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. It reminds me of a guy that just recently made a joke and he was saying that, you know, he was at home during the pandemic and he was so thankful for the internet to have something to entertain him. He goes, I have no idea how my parents fought boredom before the internet. And so he decided to go ask his 18 brothers and sisters. I'll let that one sink in for a minute. And then I'll let you parents explain that to your children before I go on. But honestly, what is God watching in our life? Are there things that we're doing that are so mundane, he just stops paying attention to us? Or is everything a possible moment with Jesus? I want to uh, go to Acts chapter 3. If you would turn there with me to Acts chapter 3. Because in this portion of Scripture, remember, the Holy Spirit came, descended upon the disciples. And now they're beginning to walk in this newfound power of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to discover that every moment with these men had the potential for a magnificent moment with Jesus. And so part one today of this meandering Meaningful meandering is magnificent 
moments with Jesus. Let me read, begin reading this to you. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg for those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at them. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. So the first thing we notice is that Peter and John, even though they were followers of Christ, they were still Jews, and in their culture, they went to temple, and they went to temple often. often. They were just doing what they do every day. It was, they would consider it a mundane part of their day. You go to Save Mart, you go to Costco, you get gas, you go to the post office, you go to church, right? It's just sometimes you're just going through the motions of your day. And around the temple, there were 10 gates. And out of those 10 gates, obviously, there was one called Beautiful that was probably the most, had the most traffic through it. And so somebody had the great idea of taking this man lame from birth and putting him in front of this quote-unquote, beautiful gate. So everyone who came in had to see him. And probably it was in the outer court, because if you had any kind of infirmity, you could not be in the inner court of the temple. And so there he is, with traffic going through, the, the, uh, lame man from, the man who was lame from birth, and Peter and John are just going through their day. And we discover that even though they're just going through the day, just, just going to temple like every other good Jew does, something happens in that moment. And they realize that every step of the righteous matters. Every step of the righteous matters. Proverbs 4.18, this is not in your notes. Proverbs 4.18 says this. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter to the full light of day. Now, I know we have a homeless crisis in our country. There are people everywhere, tents everywhere, people outside of Walmart, people outside of the places of business, people outside of restaurants. We have a homeless crisis in our country. And we all go through our day and we encounter them. Usually you try to ignore them. Maybe you'll give them a dollar. Maybe you'll give them a coupon to McDonald's to buy something. Maybe you'll strike up a conversation. But all of a sudden, Peter and John, going through their regular, normal day, just the meanderings of life, have this Holy Spirit moment. And they realize something powerful is about to happen. And what we need to realize, those of us who follow Christ, in this time, in this season of 2020, you have a power and an authority in every step that you take and to be aware that you could have a magnificent moment with Jesus at any time doing the most, most mundane of things. And Peter understood something was happening. And I just love that the story shows with its imagery that it was a beautiful gate. And at the base of that beautiful gate was a broken man. Probably dirty and disheveled, probably had smelly clothes on. And it shows the beauty of the temple against the brokenness of humanity. Can I tell you, that's a great illustration of what is, what is real about the need for Jesus. That God is glorious. He is light. He is pure. He is holy. He is perfect. And when you take this holy, perfect, undefiled God and you put him next to humanity, we are like that lame beggar. We shouldn't even be close to the beauty of the beautiful gate. Yet this is how that scene unfolds. And Peter notices it and fixes his eyes on this man, because he knows that the feet and the steps of the righteous 
are important. Every step of the righteous matters. We go on. He says in verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. So he takes him by the hand, he helps him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. I just had the Holy Spirit speak to me, and I'm going to stop for a second. I know you're watching this online, but the prayers of God reach everywhere. And I felt in my spirit to let you know that somebody who's watching today, you have a major infirmity in your legs, maybe your knees, maybe your feet. It's a major infirmity. You have great pain every time you walk. And I, if that's you, just put it in the comments section right now. Pastor, that's me. I, 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 this is what's wrong with me. In my lower extremities, I have tremendous pain all the time. And if that's you, I want you to list it right now. Because I'm going to pray for you before I go any further. And then my online pastors who are watching the comments, they're going to pray for you now. So lay your hand on whatever part of you is in pain. And Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that those who by faith are touching the part of them that is in pain, that you want to heal them. You want to take away that pain. You want to heal that infirmity. You want to make them whole. I pronounce in the name of Jesus, by the power of Jesus, that infirmity be gone and healing be upon them now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you agree with that prayer, put it in the section right now. Say, Pastor, amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. God is everywhere. He is not limited to our time and our space, and I pray that he heals you now. So they pray for this man. We continue. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple court, which he had never been in his entire life because he was considered a cripple. He couldn't be in the presence of the other men in the inner court. He was walking and jumping and praising God. And when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. You notice how this whole thing began? with Peter saying, silver or gold I do not have. This is the second life lesson that we must embrace. Money, power, and fame do not determine destiny. I know many of you are hurting. Many have lost their jobs. Many are struggling to pay their bills. Many are wondering how they're going to get through the next month watching their kids and not having childcare and kids not going to school. But the truth is, Money, power, and fame do not determine your destiny. Peter and John had no money. They had just enough money to buy bread for the day. They had no medical uh, teaching or training or education of any kind. All he had was the one thing he needed. The name of Jesus. A relationship with Jesus Christ. And he pronounced in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise, walk, And he did. He could only offer him one thing, Jesus. And that was absolutely enough. Every time you begin to feel like you don't have enough, or not enough people know you, you, people don't, uh, maybe you just don't have a big circle of of, of, uh, influence, you feel like no one cares, maybe you feel like you don't have enough uh, uh, money, to help people or resources to help people. Maybe you feel like because you didn't go to Bible college, you shouldn't tell people about the Bible and about Jesus. Peter and John knew that money and power and fame didn't create their destiny. It was fulfilled when they spoke the name of Jesus. We must continue to speak the name of Jesus over every person, every child, every parent, every friend, every uh, uh, ailment, 
and ask the name of Jesus to do the healing and the work. And if we call upon the name of Jesus, he will help fulfill our destiny. I love what it says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Again, not in your notes. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. They knew they could be weak and they could feel like broken vessels and they could have very few resources, but it was the strength and power of God that brought the destinies of themselves and others to pass and they were okay with being weak. There is, in the midst of all going, going on in this pandemic, a, a rise in depression, a rise in suicide, a rise as an identity crisis like we've never had before. People have lost their courage, lost their hope, lost their passions. Can I tell you, this is the perfect recipe for God to change your life forever? This is the perfect recipe for God to take you in your weakness, in your feeling inadequate, in your feeling distressed, to use you through the strength of Jesus to change the lives of others. And I want to speak a word to you right now. It comes directly from Joshua 1.9. This is for you. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. If you need courage right now, if you need it, passion return to you right now, I'm going to stop again, and I'm going to pray that over you. And if that's what you need, put it right now. Pastor, I need my courage back. Pastor, I need my passion back. I'm going to pray it, and it's going to happen. Father, for those who are feeling that hopelessness, and that despair, or feeling that, that the courage has been questioned, or feeling like they just don't have any hope and passion about the future, I ask you right now by the Holy Spirit to restore that in them. Just feel, let them feel pow, the power of the Holy Spirit, restoring that passion to them. I can just see it like a lightning bolt, restoring that hope and that joy and that courage and that passion right now. I just pray it in Jesus' name. You receive that gift of that new passion. And then let us know, yes, Pastor, God has restored it. Because you need it. Because he's going to use you to help restore someone else. Someone else's need of passion and courage in the name of Jesus. The story continues. And it shows us what these two fine men did. Verse 11, while the men held on to Peter and John... All the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power of godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. And by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name. And the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. We learn the next important life le lesson. We are to seize every opportunity that God provides. And this is where the awareness comes in. Even in our mundane meanderings, they can instantly become meaningful meanderings if we're paying attention. People have made Fortunes paying attention. FedEx, the, 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 the man who invented FedEx, realized the post office was too slow. He created a new entity to get people's packages to them quicker, became a billionaire. 
Who would have known that the nations would shut down and people would not be able to go out and buy things? Amazon paid attention and they made billions. Restaurants realized they were going to go bankrupt. So they said, let's get online. Let's have people uh, call on their food on a, on a text or on an email. We'll deliver it to their house. They don't have to leave their home or we'll give it to them in the car. And some restaurant chains exploded because they paid attention. The same goes for us. Do we seize the opportunities that God gives us every day when we're doing what we think is mundane, but actually they're about to become meaningful and magnificent moments with Jesus? I know many of you have been waiting to go get your hair cut or go back to a sit-in restaurant, or get your car detailed, or, or go buy some clothes, or visit the mall, or go on vacation somewhere. Listen, wherever you're going, God may give you an opportunity, and are you going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you so you seize it and use it to change someone's life forever? They seized the opportunity. I love what it says in 2 Peter 3.9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I've got my happy cup today with the happy little sunshines all over it. Reminding us that God has created the heavens and the earth. He makes the sun rise. He makes the sun fall. And it says, this God who created everything from nothing, he is also supremely patient with us. Which makes me think we had better learn to be supremely patient with others. Some of us struggle more than others being patient. I've never been accused of being overly patient. But I'm learning. I'm learning in this process. And the more patient I am, the more I find the opportunities God has given me to bring life to someone who is hurting. And by the way, the more patient I am, the better I listen to God and he gives me new life all the time. New joy, new excitement, new energy, and new passion. I need to seize every opportunity that God provides. And then finally, let's look what happens in verse 17. He says, now that the people are all paying attention to this man who's in the inner court, who's now jumping around and dancing because he's been healed from, from an ailment he had from when he was born, he says, now fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that a time of refreshing may come from the Lord. He did what we must remember to do all the time. Offer the hope of Jesus to everyone you encounter. People are looking for something. They don't even know what they want. And they're trying to fill their life with stuff that doesn't matter. They're trying to fill their life with junk that's just going to rot or rust or break or get stolen. What we offer is not silver and gold. And what offer God offers you is not silver and gold. What he offers you is peace and comfort and redemption and eternal life. He goes on, verse 20, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. For Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from their people. He lays it on the line. He lets them know 
what they need to do to get right with God. If we want to have a life filled with meaningful meanderings, if we, if we want to have, like they had in this first cha- third chapter of Acts, who had, they had just been empowered with the Holy Spirit, Peter and John, they had a magnificent moment with Jesus. Write that down. Write that in the comment. I want you to remember that this week. God wants you to have magnificent moments with Jesus. And those magnificent moments with Jesus allow you the opportunity to bring the hope of Jesus to everyone that you encounter. So what do we do with this? How do we live this out? I heard someone say recently that the, the church has lost its voice. And actually, it may appear that way because so many churches are not meeting. But actually, the church has learned to speak a different language that's actually more relevant to the culture of the day. Not that they've given up the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified. They've just learned that we've got to find new ways to tell people about the hope of Jesus. And so I'm going to ask you today, have you taken time to think about how you can explain to your loved one, your children, your parents, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, about the need of this, of this body of humanity for a loving God to enter them, to be right with a loving God? Have you explained to them what, we, what Peter and John saw so clearly, that at the beautiful gate, there was the ugly image of a broken man. The beautiful gate represents the beauty of the risen Christ, and the ugliness represents the sin and the brokenness of humanity. And our job is to call upon Jesus to come into that situation to heal that brokenness one person at a time. And maybe that person is you. Maybe you're saying, you know, I don't even know how I got on this YouTube channel. I don't even know why I'm watching this Facebook, but suddenly I realize, man, I, I need, I'm that broken person. I need to get unbroken. I need to know who I am with God. And this is how you do it. God sent his son, Jesus, to die for you. God had Jesus come to earth as a baby in the flesh of a man, but with the blood of the sinless father within him. Jesus lived a life, about 30 years, 33 years, without ever committing a sin because he was God and he was man. And then he went and died on a cross for all the things you ever did wrong and will ever do wrong. He died for humanity, God's creation, because God loved us so much and Jesus loved the Father so much. He died and gave himself for your penalty for the things you've done wrong. All you've got to do to get right with God is accept this gift of Jesus' death for you. And I'm going to pray right now that you do that. And if you feel like God is tugging you to get right with him, repeat after me. Father, I have not been right with you. I want to be made whole again. I want to stop doing bad things. I want you to fix me with you. I believe that you sent Jesus for me. I believe he was your son. I believe he died for me. I believe you rose him again to be with you and that his death for me and his resurrection allows me to ask forgiveness for what I've done wrong. Would you forgive me now in the name of your son, Jesus, whom you sent for me? Amen. Well, that's it. If you said yes to following Jesus, would you let us know right now Just put it in the comment section, Pastor, I said yes. Or Pastor, I've recommitted my life to Jesus. Our online pastors 
right now will contact you and give you something to help you on this journey. We have some great resources to help you connect with people and walk with Jesus because you should be having magnificent moments with Jesus all the time because you matter. You matter to God. You matter to us. So what do we do about walking this journey out? Go to our website at vccfresno.org. V as in Victor, V as in Victory, vccfresno.org, and download our Bible app. You can go through the Bible in a year with us. I have a morning program at 7.47 a.m. at the Valley Christian Center Facebook Live. So go to Valley Christian Center Facebook Live on 7.47 Monday through Thursday, and I'll, give, I'll go through the Bible with you in a year. It'll be beautiful. And those of you who are doing My House gatherings, continue to invite people to join you on the watch parties. Continue to call one another and pray for one another and disciple one another. And I know we can't hang very much together right now, but the time is coming when we can. So I encourage you now, become the church. Become the ones who live a life of meaningful meandering. And let's praise God that we get to be those ones. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 747.